really quick recap on what we were working, right? So I see some new faces. So this is pretty much, I'll go pretty quickly with it. This is what we were working. I've gotten some form of elbow grips and the, or I could potentially have his obliques. I'm on his lat, maybe his glutes, his hand, who cares? I'm just trying to grab him before he starts moving on me. And I'm trying to get his hands to the mat so that I can isolate one of the limbs, right? Or potentially float him past him, any one of the above. So when I first grabbed him like this, this is what we were doing. I sucked myself in, I went supine, I got underneath him, and now his body weight's on top of me so I can float him around and see if I can submit him and isolate him. That's my goal, okay? So I was here, I pulled myself in, he put his hands down, and now we start. And then I told you that the moment he lands, I don't want him running high on me. And now you're sitting here and these kneecaps are getting higher and potentially start flow passing me, pat, step over them. I don't want any of that to happen. So my first reaction before he runs high is to touch him and grab him and go chest to chest if I can. My second thing that I explained was that I was gonna float him at diagonal angles. So my next reaction was this. Remember I kept this leg high. I'm bladed on the crease of that hip and I took this arm and I had three positions on this arm because I'm trying to take out my bottom leg. So this hand had three points of contact. It laced through over the top. My elbow line is married to his elbow line. I'm pinching his wrist line and I'm doing everything I can to get that leg, to, that, that elbow to face that way. If I can get that elbow to face that way, I'll expose it for myself later to hike it and turn it more or potentially take this leg out and now start throwing this up. But most importantly is if I face the elbow that way, I control the shoulder line for him not to come back. Or I momentarily pause him so I can make my next transfer. Because right now, I'm holding this line like this, trying to take my leg out, potentially kick these things out. And then we went into these, all these different sequences of it. Okay, So I'm going to ask right, that you do a couple of things for the people that weren't here before, that you have a constant tight line on this side. So when you first floated them out at an angle, that you had a tight line, that this crease on this leg, your blade on your outside, is tensed and tight on that hip line. That I have a full connection that when I first floated them out, I'm holding on to this limb. That I'm, um, everybody can see there's a tight tension that I'm controlling him. That now I'm controlling this hip and he's doing everything he can. Now I have a free leg to kick this leg out. Right, so I'd like to be able to that we do the reverse of where we took it off yes, the other day. I also want to do a defensive set from there because there's going to be times that you're going to do this. I come here like this, I go pull, he lands chest to chest, and he shoots in on me. And now you're like this going, ah, oh, damn, I, did, I messed this up. So now I have to fight from here before these legs get compressed. This is gonna, Ethan is so tight on me right now. The, the thing for this is to hike him a little bit more and then float him out and now fight for your knee line and now I take this arm. Okay, I'll show it again, okay? So the moment, so I wanna go back and forth between the two. Ethan did everything right, he came in so tight, I messed up. I read that wrong, that when I pulled him up, I thought that I would get him up above me, but he dropped his body weight and now landed chest to chest, right? And now what he's trying to do at this point, uh, we're gonna do one reversal, but let me speak first so you understand the whole storyline and how this is applying back and forth. I go pull, and now I make a mistake, and all of a sudden, in two seconds, he thumb grips me, and he goes long on his blades, and I got this happening, I'm going, and now you're like this, going, damn, and now he's inside on both legs, right, put, 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 put the hands back in, and now he jams his legs tight on me, and now he's about to sprawl pass on me, right, or he's potentially starting to wedge this guy down and step over him, and this is all going bad on me now, quick. Right? So I got to get him out of this pocket. He can't sit here. I have no, my legs are so compressed and tight to me. They've lost most of their strength. At 45, it's like weightlifting. Everything's strong in the middle, but at the beginning and the end, it's so weak. And right now I'm at the end. They're so tight on me that I got to get them back. So as moment he lands, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to start reaching for Kimuras. I'm not going to try to put my head, I'm not going to try to sit up. I'm not going to do any of that. I need my shields back. So I'm going to fight for them. So my first reaction at this point, before he gets anywhere, he just lands. I'm like this. I go, oh, shit. I'm going to give him a little bit of a height, but I'm going to float him out. I'm going to float him out evenly, not diagonal at this point. So when I lifted him, and I'm like this. We landed with me up. I'm fighting. Now we just landed like this. 
Remember I told you the most dangerous player you can play is a person that turns it defensive to offensive in a quarter second. It's the most dangerous player you can play because he can play defensive for five to six minutes straight. And you're like, this guy doesn't attack. And now you start dropping your defensive and you didn't realize this guy's lethal. And now he picks you apart the moment you make one error. So you're like this at this point. Now I want to turn this offensive, right? So I'm going to, obviously he's going to be driving back in. All I want to do is get one shield back. So my first reaction when we first jump, Ethan's going to drive back into me. I just want to frame and bring one shield in. That's it. I'm not going to do anything else because I don't want to let go of this arm. I always wanted this arm, so I'm going right back to it. I'm only doing one thing. I'm going to just tell you a quick thing that sometimes, right now, I just pushed Ethan away, but a lot of times they're going to drive back into you. So it's drive back into me. So my first reaction is to get my hips up off the ground. I want, I don't need him down here and I'm trying to figure out how to get this shield in. You're not going to get it in. There has to be some form of height that you keep your frames because when you drop your hip line, I'm like this. And when I drop the hip line, I got to get this knee out. But if I'm sitting here, how am I going to get my hips out and get my kneecap back in? I'm not. It's just not possible. I'm trying to push this guy down, and now he's trying to really, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to push him so hard, and he's going to clear my knee lines on a, sh on, on, no, no, no. He's going to clear my knee lines on a smash, that I'm, and now I'm like this going, oh, man, he's about to run to the backside on me, right? So I have to understand the storyline and what I'm doing, what I'm doing, and how I'm doing it. So right now, everything was exactly the same. I pull him in. He lands chest to chest. I can't let that happen. I've lost my leg lines, right? They're compressed tight. They're, it is an advanced class. So try your best to comprehend what I'm saying because it's so critical to understand this in the game of BJJ. Um, I, this should get edited, but <laughs> fought um, uh, Nick Rodriguez. There's a fight, you can watch it. And Nick Rodriguez loves, right, getting body lock, uh, body lock. That's his whole thing. That's his DVD and everything. He gets here and you know what <laughs> does? He starts reaching for him. And I put, and Nick is driving and stepping over, and now you pass. Like, no, dude, you're not dry. You're not gonna start, yeah, rookie. Like, somebody that's a beginner, you're gonna go like this and get into his neck. Man, he's already passed. He probably jumped over on you. Jump, jump. And now you're like, oh, darn. This all went south again, right? So understand, I'm not gonna pull this guy on top of me. I'm fighting a man much bigger and stronger. That's what he's probably had a lot of success in his club because he's the bigger, stronger guy. Now he encountered a guy six foot four and 230 pounds and moves like a cheetah. Didn't work out that way, huh? Right, so the moment I go chest to chest, I gotta float him back out. I need my legs back, I need my shields, right? So I come like this, I go pull and go, huh, and I'll go, oh damn. My first reaction, I would love to float him. So my first reaction is to pick him up, slide him out, next reaction, right? If he drives in, again, my first reaction is we drive, I bring my hips down. Now my legs are not compressed, right? They're not glued to my, the, the heel is not glued to my, um, my glutes at all. I have my leg lines back. So when Ethan drives back into me, I'm up. My second reaction, whatever out kneecap I can get in, I drive it, I take my kneecap out, and now I'm looking like this with my first shield. Now this arm is mine. I've never let go of this elbow. So now when we're here with the first shield, I can take this leg out. Whether I go Kimura, whether I flip it over to an Omoplata, whether I take this leg out and start hunting. Okay, so now you understand the storyline. Okay, so let's pair it up now so that everybody gets a chance from top and bottom. I'm like this. I pulled, don't do the move. I'm like this. I did everything right. I want to soup and they touch. I, I, uh, I touch lats, make sure he doesn't run up. My first reaction is to come out. I make my blade, he runs back into me, I throw him over, right? Second one, pretty simple. He gets to go, okay? I've done everything right. I go pull, he's like this, I go pull, get those, and now he's like there, I go, okay, I'm out. He drives back in, I'm driving my kneecap out, and now I start my process. If you can't get the, the second half, it is an advanced class, so I need my students to learn it. Um, but also, it is, it's a hard move because uh, to practice if you don't have a good partner. If your partner's not giving you the real reactions, you're going to be lost on it. We'll try to come around and correct so everybody takes something from it. Uh, and the principle, even for some of the newer belts, you have to get your shields in, you have to get your knee lines up. 
Okay, let's partner up and see if we can do this. Okay. He just realized chest to chest, man, those DVDs, this guy's selling DVDs about chest to chest. If he's selling DVDs, I'm passing, and he keeps emphasizing chest to chest. That's Mr. Gordon Ryan. I don't, he's right. Donnie's right. Like, you can't allow chest to chest. And now he just landed chest to chest. That's a dead sign. You gotta get the hell out of there. Right? So he's gonna get out of there. He's gonna float him. Perfect. He landed. What did he do? He made a frame. He got his shield in. And now you become the artist. It's like, how do I want this? Like, do I want to control this and then turn this over? Maybe. Maybe I want to control this, and now this pocket's so open, I'll pull this out in a triangle. Maybe. Maybe I want to hold this, and I go, you know what? I'm gonna because the elbow is so hiked up over, I'm going to control the elbow, and now take this into an, a, a, a Kimura. Oh, I could do that. You know, Mplata, Kimura, like, so the foundation's there. Later on, right now I'm letting you paint the picture any way you want, as you get more advanced, you're going to start realizing, wow, this game changes in like an inch, not even three to four. The moment you lose a line, it's like that elbow, if I lost that elbow. One other thing, on the float on this isolation, your goal should ha be to have his elbow sitting here in the center of your pocket. I want to control and manipulate or have this that I'm, man I'm owning and feeling with. Is it? Because you can't, you ever have somebody like, they're trying to stack you, and the, and the angle's wrong on the elbow. And now you're trying to wonder why you can't break this guy's arm on an arm. You have a no, but you didn't understand. You didn't, couldn't even feel the elbow. So I don't want you doing this. I don't want you wasting, overwrap this, right? What is that going to do? That works in gi. Because Georgie could potentially lace this other side to this, and now he's got this gi top here. You know, yeah, that's cheating if you do it with the rash guard. <laughs> so, so... Uh, so I want to be able to understand what I'm trying to feel, what I'm trying to control. So no overwrapping, right? I'm here hunting, defending, using my hands. If he strikes, like, all I'm trying to do is control key points on it. Uh, we're going to run out of time right now. So I just, we'll capture this again. We'll go defensive, offensive, defensive, offensive. And now you can start to see how this all pairs up, okay? Uh, we have about, about two, three minutes. If you guys want to grab water, coffee, and let's have a great time and roll today. Let's do it. <laughs>